so many people in this place who are going to touch strong as that is going on. And I just pray that you begin to use us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'll read my text out of Psalms chapter 150. It says, Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his magnificent, uh, for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and the organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath been praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a lot going on in this place, but if we just look up to God, when we start to look up to Him, when we see that each and every time we go through things in this life, there's lots of chaos going on. We have to remember that God is still with us, that God is still leading us, that it is right Him, that we are making it through. There's plenty of places that we can be in this world, but we have the chance to be in His atmosphere today. We have the chance to be in His presence. And we just lift up our hands in this place, God, and we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you for the chance to come before you and lift up your praise, to lift up worship in your name, because you are deserving of it, God. You are worthy of it, no matter what goes on in this world. You are worthy of all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And we worship you in this place. We worship you in this place.
against Jesus today. Hallelujah. We've all got something to be thankful about in this place today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for your compassion and your grace.
2021 unfolds, Pastor will explain some initiatives, I'm sure, and there will be a place for every one of us to fit in and excel and succeed in the kingdom of God and be productive, and that is what God wants us to be. And right before we take this offering, I would just like to say thank you to Pastor and Sister Hilton for their leadership through a very difficult year. When our government was having knee-jerk reactions, our pastor didn't have a knee-jerk reaction. The only thing he did with his knees was pray. And he sought the will of God. And he sought the best direction for this local assembly, this local body of Christ. And because of his leadership, we have gone from a community center to a one-room church to a lovely sanctuary that has infinite potential. Amen for the future. And I just want to say as a congregation, Pastor and Sister Hill, we love you. We're behind you. We support you. We are here to work with you, beside you, for the kingdom of God in the upcoming year. Amen. Ushers, if you will, the Bible says, give and it shall be given. So let's take up our offering today in Jesus' name.
going to get into the word of the Lord today. The uh, Sunday school class can be dismissed. And, uh, as you're turning to the book of Psalm chapter 23. The book of Psalms chapter 23. I also uh, I want to say it's so good to see everybody at God's house today. And excited about what God is doing in Vertical Life Church. I appreciate your, you all's flexibility as we figured stuff out this year. <laughs> and uh, we're still figuring stuff out around here. And we're trying one or two things new every every Sunday, just trying to trying to figure out what's the best way forward. And uh, we're going to be reading from Psalms chapter 23 today. I did want to make a couple announcements. Our midweek Bible study this week, this week only, will be Wednesday night, Wednesday night at 7.30. And so we will not be having service on Friday night, but we will be having service Wednesday night. So we will be having church Wednesday night at 7.30. We're going to have a Bible study and, and uh, I just, I believe God's going to have some good things for us. And then starting next Sunday, we will be back to our regularly scheduled service times. So prayer meeting Wednesday night, Bible study Friday night, and Sunday church at 3 o'clock. And then also looking ahead, looking ahead, this is not this week, but next week, I am calling for a church-wide fast. Uh, it's going to be during the first full week of January. And uh, I'm asking that you would take one 20, 24-hour one period or more, one, one or more 24-hour periods and, and fast. And we're going to end fasting that week by taking communion on Friday night, January 8th. And so uh, we want to be looking towards that. And, and as we fast, you know, if you're going to have an extended fast, it's best to have a reason that you're fasting. I believe that it's appropriate. I think every I think every Christian should fast one day every single week. I think that's what you need to do. And if you're not doing that, I think you need to think you need to begin that in January. But when you do an extended fast, uh, it's important that you're doing it for for a reason. There's a reason why you're doing it. And it could be a plethora of things, but but for our fast next week, I want us to fast specifically that God would give us revival and breakthroughs in 2021. And also, I want us to fast that we would have more of our children and teenagers that we're reaching pray through to the Holy Ghost in 2021. So I want us to specifically fast for a revival as a whole, but also I want us to specifically fast that our children and the children that come in contact with Vertical Life Church would have a, we would have a breakthrough in that area and see people filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I truly believe uh, everything Brother Shub said. I believe that we are positioned look around today we're low in attendance we've got quite a few people out but and you know and sometimes we look around he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
very familiar passage. We probably could quote it. I'm going to preach from it today. All right. Amen. And I wanna, I'm going to preach from this topic. Help. I'm being chased. Help. I'm being chased. I wonder if you could put your Bibles down and if we can ask God to help us. Because to be honest with you, I can't preach without His help and I don't even want to try. So can we ask God, we need your help. We need your anointing, God. We're asking God that you would help us today. Come on, right now, lift up your voice. Before you're seated, lift up your voice. Let's pray, let's pray. God, we need your help. We need your anointing. I'm asking you to anoint this preached word of God. I'm asking you to anoint me as I preach your word. God, I'm asking you to speak to us today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we worship you. We magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Brother Butler, we may need the organ later. Psalms chapter 23. Very familiar passage. Psalms chapter 23 is quoted and read from and printed at the majority of funerals you've probably been to. It's come up. Somehow... There's been something about this song that resonates with death, and I don't know why. This is not a death song. This is a psalm about life. It's a psalm about living. It's a psalm about the will of God. It's a psalm about, and I'm being slightly facetious, there's comforting attributes to this. And I understand why it's used. However, this afternoon, I want to extract some revelation from this very familiar passage. All right. Verse number one says this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. This is a psalm written by David. Uh, and you know what's interesting is um, there are, as you go through the book of Psalms, you'll see at times there are, there are, there are header uh, phrases at the beginning of, of the psalm. And sometimes it will tell you who the author is and sometimes it will tell you why it was written or who it was written to. But this particular psalm does not, I mean, all it says is a psalm of David. Doesn't say a psalm of David written to the, I forget the guy's name, but he, he wrote a bunch of psalms to him. And basically, he was writing the psalms for them to worship, to use in, in their worship service. This is just a psalm of David. I imagine that David got, got this psalm back when he's out there pasturing sheep. Before, before, uh, he rises up to become king. He, he's on the backside of the desert. And he begins pinning this song. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd. Everybody say my. my. The Lord is my shepherd. This is a statement of acknowledgement. And revelation. The Lord is my shepherd. Come on, amen. Right. Right. Come on. The Lord isn't your shepherd, although he might be. But the Lord is my shepherd. Come on, come on, come on. Breathe. Amen. 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 Y'all gonna get what I'm gonna get doing what I'm saying here in just a minute. The Lord is not my brother's shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He's mine. And I am His. And I belong to Him. The Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd is someone who cares for his
his sheep. So David is saying, I have someone who cares for me. Yes, right. I'm going to tell you, there will be times in your life where you're going to feel like you're all alone. But you're not truly alone if the Lord is your shepherd. Because the Lord is my shepherd and he cares for me. Shepherds, they don't, they don't kill their sheep. They care for the sheep. Shepherds, shepherds have a special bond with their sheep. And the sheep have a special bond with their shepherd. Amen. David is acknowledging the fact that the Lord is my shepherd. I have someone who cares for me. I have a shepherd. The next phrase says, I shall not want. This is a statement of what happens when the Lord is your shepherd. Amen. Come on. We could also say that the Lord is my shepherd. Come on. I don't belong to the devil. Come on. Come on. I belong to the Lord. Amen. The government is not my shepherd. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My boss is not my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And the Lord is my shepherd. Hey, I'm telling you what. I got somebody that cares for me. He cares uh, about how, if I have food to eat. He cares if I have money in my bank account. He cares if I'm struggling. He cares if I'm depressed. He cares. And, and the adversary, he cares only because he wants to kill me. But I, the adversary is not my shepherd. The devil is not my shepherd. I'm not going to fear because the government's not my shepherd. The government isn't the one that takes care of me. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The I just 
give myself to God, then, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose something out here in this world. Well, you know what? You might lose it, but you're not going to diminish. When you have to sacrifice something for God, He never asked you to give something up that He's not going to replace with something better. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm not going to be lacking in anything. I'm not going to be lacking in what I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It is, it is the will of the Lord, my shepherd, that I prosper and not lack in anything. Yes, sir. It is not the will of God that I live in poverty. Amen. Poverty is not, it's not a, 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 an expression of holiness. That's right. All right. Poverty is the expression that the Lord is not your shepherd. Come on. That's right. Come on. Preach. All right. That's good. That's good. Come on. I'm not saying you're going to be wealthy when the Lord's your shepherd. But you might be. But I promise you, you'll have more than poverty. The Lord is my shepherd. David said in another place, I think it was David, I know it was one of the writers of Psalms, he said, he said, I've been young, now I'm old. He said, and I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging for bread. Hey, I don't know what 2021 is going to bring. I don't know what kind of challenges this next year is going to bring. But what I do know is my shepherd. What I do know is that the Lord is my shepherd. And that the Lord is my shepherd. And my shepherd is going to take care of me. My shepherd is going to make sure that I have enough. My shepherd is going to take care of my family. My shepherd is going to take care of me. There's revelation in being under the shepherd. As long as I am underneath the lordship of Christ, I shall not want. As long as I am underneath the lordship of Christ, I shall not be in need. I'm about to take off. Y'all hold on. <laughs> so how do I get the Lord to be my shepherd? Praise God. There we are. John chapter 10. Verse number 7. Okay. The Lord wants you to prosper. The Lord wants you to not live in poverty. So how do I get the Lord to be my shepherd? Then said Jesus unto them again. Verily, verily, I say unto you. I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves. And robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but. For to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Jesus is the shepherd, but he's also the door. Jesus is the shepherd, but he's also the door into the sheepfold. All right, all right, come on. So, how do I get the Lord to be my shepherd? I've got to enter in through the door. And how do I enter in through the door? I gotta go through Jesus. Come on, man. Come on. Amen. Come on, man. How do I go through Jesus? The apostle Peter said, you gotta repent and you gotta be baptized like we're gonna.
going to do with Brother Austin here at the end of service. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so how do So how do we get in the door? Well, we go through the plan for salvation. Yes, sir. We got to repent. We got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And we got to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that's how you get in. Come on. Amen. That's how you get the Lord that's to be. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. You know, I believe that, that the Lord wants to be everybody's shepherd. The promises. Don't apply to those that don't allow him to be the Lord. The Lord has to be your shepherd to get the promises that come along with the Lord being your shepherd. Once you've entered in and Jesus has become your shepherd, then Jesus himself said that you will find life more abundant. You know, when someone has issues in their life, the first thing they have to do is they got to figure out, is the Lord my shepherd? If a marriage is falling apart or if, if you're having issues on the job or it just seems like you just can't break through that barrier, whatever's going on, then, then we need to stop and we need to ask ourselves, am I carnal and, and am I, am, or is the Lord my shepherd? Because oftentimes we see that we've, we, we're not where we need to be. But here's the deal. The Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not. All right. Now here's the deal. When the Lord becomes your shepherd, get ready. He's going to read for me. He's going to use the, uh, where's the yellow mic? Do you have the yellow mic? You got it? All right, cool. When the Lord is your shepherd, I got to warn you. He's an active shepherd. Come on. The Lord's not a lazy shepherd. Because laziness is ungodliness. And if you're lazy on your job, you need to pray through. But that was free. I got to warn you that if the Lord becomes your shepherd, he's a very active. Austin, can you come help me real quick? He doesn't know what's about to happen. I'm not going to do anything crazy to you. All right. Here's, here's what's going to happen. Okay? Ready? You're going to be the sheep. And for this interaction, I'm going to be the Lord. I'm not the Lord. Okay? But I'll be the Lord for this interaction. Now, I, I just want you, as he begins reading, I want you to just kind of walk away from me. Maybe find a place to sit and, then, and stand up and move. Just, just kind of in this area. Can you do that? All right. So he's going to read. And he's going to read Psalms chapter 139. Right? Verse, starting at verse 1. What's it say? O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Okay, stop. Sit here, sit down. What did that verse say? Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. I know where you're sitting. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can get up. Okay, keep reading. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Oh, he I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I'm not sure what Pastor Hilton's about to do to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The Bible says that that he knows what you're thinking. Right. I don't actually know what you're thinking. Okay, keep reading. Just keep walking. Just go somewhere. It's 
Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. All right, yeah, lay down on that pew. Poor Austin, I'm sorry. Never, never gonna want to be used by me again. I see. All right, now I want you to I want you to begin walking far away from me. Go ahead, keep reading, Ryan. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Uh huh. Thou hast be set me behind and before. And yeah, I can't do that because I'm not God. I can't go before him. But, <laughs> but if this was the real, if I could really, if I could really illustrate this, I would be in front of you and on the side of you. I'm all, and in the back of you, and on the other side of you. Yes. Yes. Keep walking. Yes. Just keep walking. Yes. Keep reading. And lay thy hand upon me. Mm. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Uh huh. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Where can I go from your spirit? Oh, or, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Or where shall I flee from your presence? Go ahead. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. Hey, go ahead. Ascend up into heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we don't have the sound of or the uh, special effects for that one. <laughs> okay? What's it say? If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Come on. Come on. No matter where he goes. Come on. Try it. Come on now. If he goes up into heaven, thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> no, keep reading, but, but in just a second. But no matter where he goes, yes, sir. the Lord is there. He said, if I go up into heaven, what, what, what's that mean in, in, in 2020 terminology? That means when I'm at the top of my game, when I'm making everything right, you're there. But what's the next thing say? If I make my bed, where? In hell. If I make my bed in hell, if I'm walking in sin, what's it say? Behold, thou art there. Behold, you're there! Right. Read. If I take the wings of the morning uh -huh. and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. If I fly away to the farthest part of the sea and the farthest corners of the earth. Read. Even there shall thy hand lead. Even there. So here's the picture. This is a sheep that's taken off running and is running away. I'm going to get away because of that shepherd. I'm going to get away. I'm going to get away. But no matter where I go, ah, you're there. Help, I'm being chased. And some of you think that when you make a mistake that God forgot about you. I come to preach to you that the Lord is chasing you. He's thinking about you while you're sitting. 
see Rick Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter, read it. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Yes, When's he thinking these thoughts, Brother Willie? When you're out there doing the stupidest thing you've done, he's thinking about you. And we have this idea that the Lord is thinking bad thoughts about us and he's wanting to kill us. But Jeremiah said, the Lord told Jeremiah, Behold, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, and they are, they are thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. You know what the Lord is thinking while he's chasing you? He's thinking about your potential. He's thinking about your calling. He's thinking about where you, he wants you to go. He's thinking about who he wants you to be. tell you, once the Lord becomes your shepherd, you can't run away from him. Once the Lord becomes your shepherd, you can't get away from him. Once the Lord becomes your shepherd, you can't even get yourself out of his mind. statement of purpose. But 
But I believe there's a dimension beyond where we want to be in five years. Right. Yes. I think the more accurate question is where does he right. want me to be in five years? That's right. Where does he, in his mind, see me in five years? All right. And if you've been running away from God, and if you've been running away from his plan, and if you've been running away from his purpose, I'm going to tell you, he's going to keep chasing you until you surrender or you die. a plan for you. Yes. You say, but I've messed up. I've made mistakes. All he's looking for you to do is repent. Come on, <laughs> Come on bear sauce anymore. Come here. All right. Stay, stay a couple paces behind me. You're God, and I'm running away from you. But you got a purpose for my life, and you got a plan for my life, and you see, God's chasing me. He's chasing after you. He's, he's following behind you with this plan. And all he's wanting you to do is repent. And you know what repent means? It means to turn around. Repent means to turn around. And what you see, God's there. ourselves up and the devil gets in our mind and says you stupid idiot you've done that 15 times and you said you'd never do it again and you did it again what are you thinking you 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 crazy idiot and and and, and all the while we're beating ourselves up and, and all the while what you don't realize is God is right behind you and God is chasing you and all he's wanting you to do is repent and face him verses 
and the last three verses. In the first three verses, we see David talking about God in third person. The Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me. He leadeth me. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth. But then something shifts. And in the next three verses, David begins talking to God in second person. And David says, Thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, thou preparest a table before me. Thou anointest my head with oil. What happened? I proposed to us this afternoon that in the first half, he was saved. But in the second half, he went beyond salvation and into relationship. What happened? A personal relationship with the shepherd. Do you know that you can be saved without having a personal relationship? You can make it to heaven without having a close personal relationship. All you got to do is obey the plan of salvation. But that's not good enough for me. Because there's some things that happen with relationship that don't happen with salvation. Your goodness, your mercy. And what happens is the grace of God gets activated in your life. Grace is unmerited or unearned favor. You didn't do anything except enter into relationship. David said that goodness and mercy are going to follow me <laughs> all the days of my life. In Romans chapter 8, verse number 28 says, For we know that all things work together for the good. Gently. <laughs> uh, 
Here I am, Wolf. Hold on. Let me see what's happening over here. I don't know. I'm kind of second guessing myself. Here I am, walking through life. And I lose my job, and goodness and mercy tackle me. And goodness and mercy begin whispering in my ear. You lost your job because you got a better one coming. Come on! You thought it was devastating. And had you not been under the influence of the shepherd, and had you not had a relationship with the shepherd, it would have devastated you. But that bankruptcy happens, and goodness and mercy tackle you. Galatians 
Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We're going to reap good things so long as we've been planting good things.
that we're being chased. I just come to encourage somebody. Just keep doing the right thing and do it consistently. Do it every day. 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 And the shepherd's going to restore your soul. And the shepherd's going to give you anointing. And the shepherd's going to set a table before you. He called up and goodness and mercy are going to tackle you. Come on, I want every head bowed. I want every eye closed. As we begin to reach up. Come on, goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Oh my name. Come on, plant the seed. Yes, you know my name. Pastor, I'm not seeing any increase. Oh, just keep planting the seed.
has given us victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Why don't we clap our hands unto the Lord. Let's thank you. God, I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, let's walk in victory this week. Amen. We're going to have incredible time around here Wednesday night. And uh, tell you what, why don't you invite people out and tell them we're going to have a Holy Ghost time. And let's continue to have victory. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you Wednesday night.